Okay, so fill in this gravel. So we're using pea gravel, as you can see. This really kind of fills it in nice and compact. So I basically want to fill this entire thing with gravel. And uh, I want to get it at a point where I can put my two inch foam, four inches of concrete, and about an inch and a quarter of floor leveler. So the reason I'm going with inch and a quarter floor leveler is primarily for the shower slope. Since I'm doing a curbless shower, basically the longest point of my shower is two feet. You know, typically you go with about a quarter inch per foot for the slope. But since I'm using some of these flat uh, pebble stones, I want to get a little bit steeper of a pitch. So it would be really ideal to have about three quarters of an inch of slope. So three quarters, um, you know, would basically, if we had about an inch and a quarter of thickness of height, would get us down to the drain uh, pretty nicely. So inch and a quarter minus uh, three quarters, a half inch. So you're going to be basically a half inch at that drain location. And you need to have at least that for support for underneath the actual flange of the shower pan. You can't just go down to nothing. You're going to have to have some thin set and some mortar to support the drain flange itself. So if you have a half out, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, that'll work well. So with a three quarter inch drop, you're going to have plenty of slope towards that drain. Highly recommend you go a little bit above that quarter inch per foot when you're doing pebble stones, just because of the nature of the stone, uh, you know, it just needs a little bit more steepness for it to drain properly. So first thing, let's find out where our, what, what is level. Uh, obviously this is really sloped down kind of went over this before. This is almost about an inch and a quarter or so out of level from the back side of the wall to the front of the bathroom. So I'm not really overly concerned about that. I want to find my low point first. So this actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's, so I guess my low point is over here, but what I really want to do is align everything with my door entry. So my door entry is you know, somewhere right around here. So it's kind of right in the middle. So we'll reference our, um, basically we're gonna have seven and a half inches of depth. That's where we want this gravel level to be because you have two inch foam, four inches of concrete, that's six. We're gonna have a little um, cork membrane that you're gonna put down for the floor heating. That'll take about a quarter inch plus the floor heating itself and then the floor leveler. So if you go down seven and a half inches, all the way around, we'll be in good shape and we'll be able to get what we want. Now, this is all variant too. I mean, if you have three and a half inches of concrete, I don't think that's gonna really matter. You know, obviously if you have more than that, the more stability, but you need to have a high strength concrete underneath of all this. But my biggest goal is to make sure I have a good enough slope towards that shower drain. So we're just gonna basically reference off of this side, we'll go like seven and a half. So looking at my laser, if I, that is seven and a half right here. Yeah, that works pretty well. One and a quarter. So basically we just want to be, you know, since my, I just have my laser at a random point. So if we get all this gravel to about 21 and a quarter, we'll be exactly where we need it. So we're going to need quite a bit. This is probably going to take a good half a yard of uh, gravel. I recommend a pickup truck, you know, getting bags of, uh, you know, of this stuff would be, Ridiculous, you're probably looking at 35, 40 bags of uh, stuff to fill something this deep in. So let's go ahead and start filling it in. All right, so I basically ran out of the other stuff. So I have just some bags. quarter 21 and a quarter a little high over here but again I mean I'm going for four inches on the concrete but if it's three and a half or something like that I'm happy with that so this has to be having this fine aggregate kind of helps get that foam nice and flat too so that the, the foam isn't moving Twenty 
one and a quarter, 21 and a quarter. I think we'll go with that. It's all within reason. So if you just make this flat, it'll make that foam sit nicely. But yeah, now we're ready. We're gonna form up this wall so that we can be the same level as this. And then we'll do the concrete mud bed. All right, so we got our gravel down. We're basically roughly about seven and a half inches below our low point of the bathroom. So now we need to have something underneath of our wall to frame up our back wall. I really think it's best. I mean, you could concrete this thing as far as running the whole slab. Now this is all time imperative. If you need to really move on with the project, I'd probably just say, go ahead and just do all of the, the, the foam and the concrete all at once. So then you can frame and get and move on with your project. But in this scenario, I'm just gonna actually just create a little bit of a curb right up against my wall so that my, my framing can be on top of this concrete. And then I'll put in my foam and then concrete this entire base. My thought process on that is that it might make it a little bit easier to get this bottom layer level because I'll have this the same height as this. So then all I have to do is run a screed board across here and have a nice level pad underneath of where I'm gonna be putting my floor leveler. Um, either way is fine. I mean, you, you can definitely go ahead and try to make this level with a screed board and just you know be as careful as possible. But in my mind, I think this is gonna be the easiest way to go, making this the same level as this. So 13 and three quarter is what I want this to be at. All right, so we wanna be basically five and a half away from this wall. Tamp that down a little bit. That's pretty level there. 13 and three quarter, 13 and three quarter. So we're good to go there. So that's completely level. And uh, so we'll pour some concrete in here. Let's get some ledger boards here so that this doesn't move. Let's do something like this. Okay, so that shouldn't move. I need to get uh, So one thing that really helps out with mixing concrete is one of these bucket mixers. This allows you to mix it a little bit thicker in a bucket, a typical sized or a typical paddle. You just can't get it dry mixed enough. It usually gets really, really wet. So I like using these things. This helps out on mortar beds, concrete, anything that you need a drier mix and you're mixing in a bucket. All right, so let that set up. And tomorrow, put down the foam, get the concrete in. So, and again, if you're in a rush, this would definitely slow you down a little bit because you're pretty much kind of finished up for the day, letting this set up. So, you know, it could be faster if you just poured the whole bottom floor and then framed on top of that. But I kind of like this idea because now I have something I can screed right against, make it easy. All right, next morning, let's take these forms out. It's not too bad. It's still a little high on this back side, but that's close enough. What we'll do is just uh, make sure that we're an inch and a half. This is the more of the area that I'm more concerned because the door is right here. We'll just cut our board. 
to make this level. Since this is our low side, we're just gonna cut, we wanna have, we wanna go down below an inch and a half from our low point here. So we'll just make this inch and a half, two inches. No, we gotta go down two inches. Something like that. So, perfect, that's level right there. So, this is gonna be our screed board. We'll screed this out. We'll be about an inch and a half on our low side. This will raise up a little bit, but this really won't matter because I'm framing and then drywall just comes straight down over top. Plus we're doing floor leveler, so that'll kind of <clears throat> take care of itself. But um, I mean, ideally it would have been nice if this was completely 100% level with this. That's what I was aiming for. But I guess some of that concrete kind of humped up. But concrete is kind of a rough section of the whole situation. It's kind of like rough in framing. You know, with, if you're within a quarter inch, it'll be fine. It's just, you're gonna get more accurate once you do the floor leveler. And then when you actually do the shower pan, that's where you really wanna take your time and be 100% accurate. But this screed board now will get us a full layer of concrete underneath the here, which is gonna be the support for everything within the bathroom. So uh, you definitely need to have high strength concrete underneath of it. You can't just do a mud bed, you know, a four to one sand mix. You need something with aggregate to do it. Uh, but as you can see, we got a lot of concrete here. So, Sometimes that's hard to gauge, but they do make calculators to figure it out on your depth. We're actually gonna be a little bit more shallow than I thought overall, which is fine. I would say if you get three inches of concrete, you're pretty good to go. Uh, four inches is just a bonus. Four inches is kind of the industry standard when it comes to the thickness of pads. So, but yeah, the idea is just to have that lowered. So then when we floor level, we have enough pitch down for the drain. So we'll get started on mixing our concrete. And I should mention that this foam is basically creating the, the vapor barrier. If you didn't do two inch foam like this and you just wanted to do concrete, I would put a four mil plastic down it is basically just a vapor barrier. But since this, we're putting the foam down, this is acting as our vapor barrier and insulation for the heated flooring. So it's not gonna to hurt to have a little bit of fine aggregate on top of this. This is a little bit thicker on this side. You know, I'm just, I just don't wanna run out of concrete. So I'm just putting a little bit of filler over here. Okay, so on here, I would just add like a three inch pipe on here just to prevent that from going too close to around the drain. Yeah, the calculations on that concrete were definitely accurate. I needed 18 bags and I uh, added a little bit of gravel here and I didn't need to do that. But, you know, the concrete doesn't have to be 100% correct, but this is about an inch and a quarter. You know, I'm more sensitive about the shower and making sure I have a good slope here. Um, you know, and then if we have to raise the floor, I mean, we'll evaluate it after we do the floor leveler. But if for any reason we needed to raise this side, it's not gonna be a big deal. At least you won't really have a big threshold. But my goal is just to get the river rock that we're gonna be putting down, you know, straight at that entry at the concrete level. So when 
they do laminate flooring or whatever they're going to do in the future, it'll line up really nicely. But concrete is definitely the way to go or to remove all of this. So now we have a nice, easy surface to work with. So I hope some of that was helpful to you with developing a basement bathroom, adding concrete to create a curbless shower. But I wanted to mention, if you are serious about doing this, definitely check out my course. I go through the entire process step by step in my tutorials here, uh, break it down into a little bit more manageable pieces of content. And what's best of all, if you have any questions about your own personal bathroom, you can leave me a comment down below of any one of my tutorials. I'm more than happy to get back to you and be able to help you with your project. So definitely check it out. My DIY membership will encapsulate all of my courses and including all of the additional videos I'm gonna be having on this basement bathroom. So thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.